Cut Like Wound is for me a, a departure from the kind of fiction that I have been writing before because I've always written literary fiction and with Cut Like Wound I moved into uh, the world of the genre novel to some extent and uh, when I began uh, working on this novel um, I, I had two cities, geographical locations to choose from. Uh, the two cities that I knew really well, one was Chennai and the other one was Bangalore. But since I uh, haven't lived in Chennai for the last 22 years, I was very afraid that my novel was going to be tempered with a lot of nostalgia, which I didn't want because this is a whodunit to some extent and it needed a certain immediacy. It needed to be very, very, I, I thought, edgy. And to that extent, I thought I would then set the novel in the city that I made my home in for the last 22 years. And so I know it to some extent, not really to, to its fullest extent, but I thought then Bangalore would be the home for this novel. And it would be in the streets of Bangalore that this st story would unfold. You know, it, it's actually a very strange thing because you see, I'd finished working on a novel called Lessons in Forgetting and it, it would, you know, it, it's, it's a pure literary novel. And um, I was doing a lot of book tours for it. So I uh, was in Italy in May 2010, and um, uh, we had my and I've done about a three-country tour, and I was like up to my eyeballs with the same question that journalists had been asking me in three different countries in three different languages, which was basically, what is the status of the Indian woman? And I, I was like, you know, I mean, uh, how many times do I answer this question? I, I mean, you know, even writers are human, so you do get tired of answering the same question again and again and again. And at some point, I told myself that in the next book, I'm not going to write about a woman. There's going to be no reference to the status of the Indian woman whatsoever. And um, so my son was traveling with me at the same time. And we were sitting in a cafe in Rome and, you know, we were talking about the press conference that I had been to and so on. And so there was this transvestite who walked past and on a lark, my son said, maybe you should write about a transvestite. And, and I was like, this, you know, I laughed at that point. But later when I went back to the hotel room and I was thinking about it and I had the scene in my mind of a man dressing up as a woman. And so I had the scene and it, it, it was like a scene that was unfolding in front of my eyes as if I were watching a film. And I thought that I was going to write that scene down. And then I also had another image of a, of a, of, of a policeman on a bullet. A bullet uh, is a kind of great uh, motif in this book. You know, it, it represents the inspector to some extent. And I had these two images and I was asking myself, what am I going to do with these two images? And I, one was with, with a transvestite, what was I going to you know, do? Because I normally write, um, all my fiction is set in India and it is always set in small towns and uh, villages. And uh, as it is, even as an urban phenomenon, you don't see too many transvestites in India. And um, it, then it would become rather precious, you know, when I would be writing that it would be contrived. And, and then I said, but it's, it's not a transvestite, it's someone who is a, uh, a woman trapped in a man's body. So what is the other option that I have? And then that's when I remembered the Hijra community. And I said, okay, here is something that I can draw from and make it that much more real. It's not going to be something that is kind of set in some eclectic part of the country and so on. And uh, so all of these thoughts, you know, kind of whirled around and finally I thought, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a noir novel. Uh, now the only problem was that I, as a rule, don't read crime fiction. Very simple reason because any book that I read, I like to read the last pages first. So <laughs> that completely ruins, you know, the, the joy of reading a, a good whodunit. And um, so I said, okay, I'm not going to allow that to bog me down. I'm just going to write and I'm just going to see how it goes. And uh, halfway through the novel, uh, when I started discussing it with various friends of mine, some of them suggested that I try and read some, you know, uh, crime fiction to see if there is a certain, certain things that you need to follow and stuff like that. Absolutely extensive research for this book. Uh, because one, you see, the thing is, um, 
all that we are exposed to in terms of television are, you know, we see CSI, we see Law and Order, we see that kind of, you know, a lot of crime serials and stuff like that. <clears throat> or even the films, uh, the crime films that we've seen, it's all very American or at the most it's all very British. And um, that has absolutely no relevance to the way policing is done in India. The policing procedures are so different. Our guys here yeah, don't even use gloves when they go to a scene of crime. Half the time they don't even, because we are still, uh, if you look at statistics, we are, we are very under policed in that sense. So these guys have a huge burden of uh, work, I mean cases to go through and it's not easy for them. So our, our policemen have uh, very different ways of doing things. So it meant that I needed to completely unlearn everything that I had seen on television or in film and start looking at policing the way it's done in India from, you know, the, from actually grassroots levels. Now, the, the problem that I had was, of course, you know, I managed to find the right people to talk to, etc. And I mean, got all the permissions and everything. But all the police officers that I met would only give me very sanitized versions of how policing is done. And I was like, oh, you know, how am I going to get the real story? And then fortunately, I uh, managed to uh, meet a, a police officer who at that time was out of uniform. So we met for coffee and had this really long chat. And he was very uh, open in the way he would talk about things and he would tell me things which none of the others had told me until then. Interestingly enough, the next time I met him, he was back in uniform. And then when my, I, I would ask him questions, I, I would hear the sanitized replies. So then I hit upon this solution. What I would do is I just pick up the phone and call him. So then he's not actually kind of, you know, thinking. So his answers were not pat. They were uh, very, very spontaneous to that extent. Uh, apart from that, there was a lot of reading up on forensics. I had to attend um, a post-mortem because I needed to see how it was done and how it feels. See, again, I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, all the stuff we see uh, on television is so unlike what really goes on here. This, you know, even when you walk into a morgue, there is no way you can write about the stench of a morgue unless you have experienced it. So there was all those things that I had to do in terms of understanding uh, invest certain investigation procedures as basic as you know when an FIR is written what does the file look like and every state in India has its own different ways of doing things uh, that the police manual might be broadly the same but you know things are slightly different from state to state and since I was writing about Karnataka and Bangalore city specifically I had to make sure that it was pertinent and relevant to this city rather than to say another city in the country. In this novel, see, with all with uh, uh, all my earlier novels, I may have kind of drawn from observation. I might have drawn from hearsay. I might have drawn from people I've met. But with this novel, it was completely, um, uh, you know, I had zero material to draw from because, uh, you know, until I started writing this novel, I hadn't even been into a police station. So it was then I started kind of, you know, looking, it was really observation more than anything else. Thereafter, every time I passed a policeman, I still do that even now. I keep looking at them, you know, what are they doing and how do they stand? What are, what are the kind of mannerisms they have and stuff like that? So it's, it's almost like, um, uh, I mean, two other art streams that I can think of. It's like, you know, looking at a live model and sketching or it's like an actor looking at people and mimicking them or imitating them. So in that sense, I had to really kind of push myself to the maximum extent to be able to write about these uh, characters who are uh, not the kind of people that I would have any uh, engagement with on a daily basis. You see, this, this novel begins on the first day of Ramzan. And uh, the action is, uh, uh, it, 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 it takes 38 days actually for the novel to finish. And the 38th day actually, because I started it off uh, saying the 1st of August, because this is set, the period is 2011. So Ramzan uh, began on the 1st of August in 2011. And in Bangalore, uh, on September 8th, we have a St. Mary's Basilica here in Shivaji Nagar, which is the area where most of this action happens in this book. And uh, so 8th of September is the St. Mary's uh, feast day and there is a huge car procession here 
and there are um, all the, the devotees and the pilgrims are all dress, dressed in saffron. So it's a sea of saffron. So it's a, it's a very, uh, it's, a, it's a Christian festival that has acquired Hindu overtones to some extent the way that you know the, the statue of Mother Mary is taken out in a car, what they call a rat. So there is a kind of procession and it, it goes through the streets of Shivaji Naga etc. Which is standard uh, I think ritual in, in temples, you do not really do that with uh, churches. Uh, so in some sense this novel captures elements of um, uh, Ramzan, captures elements of uh, Christianity. I am not saying as in terms of religion but in terms of ritual. And there are some uh, goddess worship in this, so it captures elements of Hindu worship as well. So uh, it is it is a novel that covers uh, many religions, but it is primarily uh, a who done it. So it is built around um, uh, a murder that happens in Shivaji Nagar area, in, on the first night of Ramzan. And uh, the body is discovered m several kilometers away uh, in a place called Henur, uh, which is the outskirts of the city. And so because of that, it falls into the jurisdiction area of a particular station house. And, and the senior officer there is a man called Inspector Bore Gauda. And he is the hero of the novel. So he is someone who is on the wrong side of 40. He is um, fallen into a rut because um, you know he began the profession with great idealism but at some point discovered that he was fighting a daily battle with corruption and uh, apathy from his seniors, turned him into a person who has now kind of given up and suddenly when this uh, body is, is discovered in his uh, jurisdiction area, he becomes responsible. And he sees there is something um, unusual about the murder and even the, the modus operandi really. And, uh, and then he remembers about a murder that had taken place two weeks ago which had all also employed the same MO. And he starts seeing a pattern where nobody else sees a pattern. And he thinks that there is something more to it than just random murders happening in various parts of the city. And so it be begins as a quest for him to try and find out what is happening. But also I think what makes uh, Cut Like Wound different from the standard whodunits or the standard Noah novel and why I call it a literary Noah is that here there is also equal weightage for the, the villain or the antagonist of the, of the novel. And th that person is given an equal voice, is given as much um, uh, uh, background and space so that you understand why he is compelled to do what he is doing. So uh, to that extent I think um, it, it follows the, the usual parameters of uh, a, a noir novel but it brings in the sensibilities of a literary fiction. No, he has his, uh, uh, the, the murderer has his own space and uh, you also see, uh, you see him as not just as someone uh, I'm, I'm going to not say he or she, okay, because I would be giving away the story here. But the murderer is someone who has had a, uh, a very kind of, uh, I, I wouldn't say fractured childhood, but, uh, but there are so many uh, elements playing in the murderer's mind that you can see that this isn't someone who is just a pure psychopath. There is a certain vulnerability involved, so, so much so that you start feeling a certain kind of affinity for the murderer and you almost kind of understand why the murderer is driven to doing what he or she does. Um, I think in this book it, it really would be about identity because you know it's not just, uh, it's everybody, almost all the main characters in this novel are constantly battling to understand who they are. Uh, it could be um, uh, an identity in terms of personal identity, it could be sexual identity, it could just be even a kind of class identity of not knowing where you stand. You know, so in that sense I think while uh, on the one hand it is uh, uh, a, a it, it's a noir novel, it does all those things of you know telling you uh, of how a crime is committed and how the police find the criminal or how the criminal is found etc. On the other hand, almost um, 
at, at every level there is these, this question of identity is raised. And the other thing that I think which I found interesting about the writing of this novel which I found I had not done before in my early, earlier works was that with, with a crime novel because it is set in the world that we live in it, and it is a, a contemporary crime novel, it is not like a historical crime novel or whatever. Um, you know most of the crimes are drawn from the society that we live in today and because of that uh, it allowed me to make a kind of social commentary on what is happening around us because with, uh, with a literary no novel what happens a lot is that we, I delve into the inner worlds of the characters rather than the outer worlds. Outer worlds only have a kind of um, partial influence on the characterization. Whereas here the outer world had a huge um, role to play in how the characters evolved and developed. Uh, it actually took me not very long from start to finish two years. I mean this is for myself, this is a joy for myself is that when I started working on this novel at some point I realized that this character that I had created Inspector Gouda was not someone that I was going to be able to let go of that easily. So then I knew that this was going to be the beginning of a series of other novels that would have Inspector Gouda. No, I am just thinking about it, 2014 is what I have told everybody when the next Gouda novel will be out.